This is Adam King from Aliens Don't Ring Doorbells, and you're listening to Madness to Creation. Go ahead, say it. Welcome to the Madness to Creation podcast, where self-care and music merge. This is Maddie. How are you? I, I have this amazing guest. Uh, he is a producer. He writes mo- uh, movie scores, and he's also coming out with an album June 11th called Earth City One, The Lawning, and his name is Ethan Gold. And Ethan Gold is not only a producer, a songwriter, but he also is a mental health advocate. And mental health advocate in the sense that he um, that he doesn't like work for an organization or anything like that. He um, he believes in um, ending the stigma of mental health, and that is something that we strive for here at Madness Creation. My goal is to where we have media normalized. To where we have these conversations on the regular because i believe the more this platform gets out here uh the more that we can have these conversations the more artists can have conversations not only on this platform but on other platforms and honestly as a special education teacher by day and a mental health advocate and and also this podcast owner i that's what i want to do is change the world if, if it just takes um just some of you listening uh, that that's amazing and getting something out of it. That's my goal, and also get you to check out some amazing music you might not check out otherwise. And Ethan Gold has some incredible music out. And uh, for example, I recently listened to his single "Pretty Girls," which came out about six days ago um, through YouTube. Just type in Ethan Gold "Pretty Girls" and you will find it. And it is such a whimsical. Such a indie singer songwriter feel to it, which kind of I don't want to say is a departure from his art rock, but it it allows pe- the listener to peel a different layer on who Ethan Gold is, and and basically what I really appreciate about that song is you know how women should be um, that women should value their beauty, their self worth, and everything like that, and how they look at themselves and. To me, that's what this is all about, is empowering the woman to let her know that she is beautiful no matter what skin she is in, no matter what shape of her body is, and all that. Um, beauty radiates inside of us all, and we need to acknowledge that and recognize that. Beauty is way beyond um, that individual on the magazine cover. It is personality. It is uh, self-image and knowing your self-worth, and that is what... I really got out of this video, and I will provide a link in the on the madisticreation.com when I have the feature read the gold up this evening. And it was just a, an incredible discussion, talking about our planet, talking about uh, how we've been coping with the COVID nineteen pandemic, how we've been talking about a um, mental health advocate, and Ethan Gold also opened up about um, his songwriting, which um, talks about like you know his struggles that he has within himself in terms of knowing his self-worth and everything like that. And I just hope at the end of the day that you can relate to this. And that is my goal is that you're able to relate and that just know that you are not alone. And if you need somebody to talk to, uh, just email me at madnesscreation.gmail.com. I will answer your email and I would love to hear from you. And, uh, to me, it's, that's more important to have that connection with a person instead of just having a bunch of bunch of likes on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, and all that stuff. And uh, that's just that's what I value more than anything. And um, as you know, I'm a special education teacher by day. I'm also a mental health advocate and this podcast owner by night. And just as summer is getting closer, um, please be mindful of your kids as well. Um, kids are unsure about what's happening next because of the pandemic that we're enduring and yes the light is at the end of the tunnel and everything like that but we still need to take the precautions necessary and in order for us to be safe so we can get back to whatever normal is for you and if you can follow us on um, madnesscreation.com and also on facebook tiktok instagram at madnesscreation that would be so awesome and also find us on twitter and mtc madness and on that note, um, here is this uh, mental health discussion and with um, Ethan Gold. Uh, take it away, Ethan. Welcome to the Madness to Creation podcast, where music and mental health merge and self-care as well. This is Maddie. How are you? And I have with me uh, producer and slash um, art rock 
uh, extraordinaire, Ethan Gold. Ethan, how are you? I'm all right. I'm uh, happy to be here talking about something that, you know, is a daily practice. Yeah, definitely. And let's let's just start off the conversation that way. Um, like, how how do you see like your mental health and stuff like that as a daily practice? What does that look like for you? Well, I haven't found, you know, anything that sort of solves everything all at once forever. And I, I, I think the notion of um, just recognizing that we all, many of us, uh, struggle and um, having whatever the tools that we, that we use that help us out, whether it's readings or mantras or, uh, you know, more professional tools, whatever we use to keep our mindset where it needs to go. It doesn't, it's, it's not a one and done thing. It's just, I find it's not only a daily thing of re- daily reminding myself um, of, you know, how I want my brain to be working and at my attitude, but also I find personally that I often need to shift things up frequently because if I do the same thing over and over again, it sort of stops working. So I'm kind of part of the practice is always looking for new uh, ways to kind of keep growing and keep, uh, keep the mindset where we want it. Definitely. And I find myself trying to grow in that practice too. And, um, but like sometimes life uh, throws uh, certain, uh, certain circumstances and all that. And um, how have you uh, grown say from last week to this week in terms of, of your practice? <laughs> um, well, I, I kind of have a, honestly, I've had the last few weeks, I've been having a bit of a hard time. Um, so uh, maybe that's an okay time, but you know, I, I will say, um, you know, a lot of it, is, uh, for example, I mean, I, this is like, literally, if you're asking me specifically this week, I've noticed that my, I was starting to, um, you know, personally, I have a historical, uh, tendency to, to injuries and I was having like little injuries. I, I, it was attempting to fix something inside my computer and broke the computer. And then I just stubbed two different toes and cut my finger. And like a bunch of like little things were happening that were kind of letting me know, okay, I'm actually, I'm on thin ice now. This, these are like, maybe in the past, I wouldn't have recognized these kind of warnings. Uh, and to me, I'm recognizing those little incidents, you know, which were, I was getting kind of angry and about the, you know, I recognize them as warnings. So just as an example, this is something I meant to talk about, but you asked me this week, example, yesterday, I decided to, to reach out to some people who are in my life and actually say, you know what, I'm actually going to need space. And um, I'm not going to be replying as conscientiously as I, as you may be used to. I may not call you back or text you back. And I don't want you to take that personally. So that for me, that was kind of an act of self-care of like creating a little bit of space in my life. Just even like socially, I get overwhelmed with all the, you know, social media and stuff I'm doing with my music and all that. Um, Social media is something I'm just really trying to kind of embrace, even though it's, it's not, not a natural pose for me, but, um, but anyway, all that stuff and including, you know, stuff in my personal life starts to actually, if I use the metaphor of yesterday talking, it was, it feels like I'm getting swarmed by bees or something. I like bees, but, but <laughs> bees, like the bees that you wouldn't like, you know? Um, and so that was just, you know, kind of an example of like a little adjustment that was sort of a new thing of like, I'm going to tell people who I have enough of a trustworthy, you know, trusting relationship with that, like, Hey, you know what you, uh, you may not hear from me as much. I may not reply as much. And I'm asking you to be okay with that. If, if you can, because I need to create some space in my life so that I can kind of get back in myself. Because I think when I'm start to fall apart, um, it's like, I'm not in my body. I'm not even in my life. It's like, I'm thinking about 10,000 things and other people's needs. And I like abandoned ship is sort of what it feels like, or I I don't often don't even notice, but it's like, Oh, I notice I must have been not in my ship for a while. And, Mm -hmm. and then screwed up stuff happens, you know, when, when you're not in that state. And so that was just a little small, that was like literally last night. So I (laughs) I mentioned, as you're like, 
this week. So that's like a fresh one for me. Like that's just like a, a tweak, a life tweak. Like, okay, my mental health is feeling a little unstable and I need to create some space. Sometimes, you know, the, the other, sometimes it would be the opposite thing of reaching out to people and saying, Hey, I'm going to need some support. You know, um, in this case, it was more, Hey, I'm going to need some, leave me alone, <laughs> you know, yeah, absolutely. That's, that's a thing. Yeah, definitely. And, th- and that's something that sometimes we forget is like just taking that time to step away for that self-care and stuff like that. Like with you being a producer and a musician, do you find that to be even more difficult since you're kind of in the public eye or do you find yeah. that as opposed to like, um, I, I don't want to use the term normal person, but like an everyday civilian, so to speak. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I do stuff in the public eye at some level. I feel like it's something I do out of um, just, it's like part of the job. I think there are people for whom that public thing is really like the, the juice that, that, that they really want out of, you know, whatever they're doing. And in my case, I'm, I've been writing music since it's just, you know, for me, music is, is kind of like a soul mission or whatever. Um, and the public side of it is something I am embracing because I have to is sort of the feeling or because it feels like it's just kind of part of the deal. Um, and, uh, but for me, it, it, it's quite uh, stress inducing. It's very much not that, you know, I'm naturally kind of an introvert and like my, alone time a lot and um, doing all that kind of stuff for me, for some people, it's probably like, again, like really fortifying for their, for me, it's the opposite. So it's something that I need to like, as I'm growing what I'm doing and building up to putting out a record and having last few things I put out have been not been sort of so public and, you know, soundtracks and instrumental things. And I'm putting out an album of songs next. So it's like there's music videos and my, personality as an artist is sort of part of the it's part of the deal that you're presenting and so I'm I'm embracing it but it's it's definitely taking some like you know inner inner just kind of getting myself into a zone and it's like I, I'm doing it for the sake of the mission it isn't the mission for me but I, I I'm accepting it as part of the job it, again that's just how I'm built um and I'm, I'm sure there are people who are built the opposite way and that's great for them, you know? Oh, definitely. And speaking of the music that you released, uh, May 14th or releasing, I should say May 14th, you're releasing earth city, uh, one, the lawning and, uh, and, um, just yeah, kind of, w- let me just jump in and say, we've pushed the release of the album, uh, to June 11th, um, okay. for, for various distribution reasons. Uh, but yes, Earth City One, The Longing is coming out June 11th. It's part one of a trilogy, as the title might might possibly uh, hint at. Um, so yeah, June 11th is the new date, by the way. Okay, June 11th is the new date, because on the press release I received from you, it says uh, May 14th. That so, was correct. Yeah, things have been shifting. Did it, did it, the, the, data uh change because of like the pandemic was that the reason behind it or uh oh no just... i mean i you know we're still in the pan- i mean it could have been no the, the it changed because i have a new distributor in in okay. europe and the european distributors in order to get stuff kind of into their system properly it, it they just requested extra time so okay. Because yeah, uh, just, take us into the yeah. writing of that album. Like, um, was it a uh, challenge in writing, like, when, 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 like, everybody was in lockdown and quarantine and all that during the pandemic? Or or did you find yourself, it was easier for you to write? Um, I found it actually not really different one way or the other um, in terms of my writing process. I, I write a lot of music. I, I tend to, I write in my sleep. I wake up with songs pretty frequently, you know, I don't know, a couple, once a week, I don't know if I average, but like, it's pretty, it's a pretty common thing for me. So for me writing, um, if any, it may have become in some ways easier because of the sort of turning down of the noise of the world. Um, But in other ways, the kind of weird pressure and strangeness of the pandemic is, you know, it's, I, I find that it's, 
I'm starting to like, I was kind of okay with it for a while and it's starting to actually feel not so okay. Like in terms of like from a mental health, personal mental health perspective, like I'm, I'm having, you know, I'm struggling a bit right now, right here, as are, I'm sure many people around the globe, you know? Um, so, so yeah, the writing for me wasn't, it, it was in some ways easier and in some ways hard. It was easier because of the space in a way, like I said, there was no temptation to like go out, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and do something or see people. So I was like, okay. But on the other hand, you know, it, there's a bit of a kind of like, you're looking at the same box for a year and the box stops looking very interesting, you know? Oh, it definitely does. And, uh, what is the biggest thing that you learned about yourself as a songwriter during the creation of this album? Um, well, the album, a lot of the album was created before the pandemic, to be honest, but I, oh, okay. I in terms of how, how I framed it, but yeah, like in terms of how I'm deci- decided to present it, you know, that was something that definitely the pandemic, I think may have influenced in some way. Um, and, and I've continued writing. I'm always sort of, you know, a couple years ahead with my writing and then the recording, you know, there's a, there's sort of like a kind of like a factory there's like an assembly line and everything has to go in its proper order and sometimes songs will skip the line but um and i i may be doing that on part two but anyway uh um yeah i the the pandemic for me you know i there are people for whom it was uh has been a you know horrific tragedy and i guess for me personally you know i sort of like honor the people who've been through like much more difficult times than I have, um, you know, as an artist who isn't, you know, forced to, to go out and, you know, handle big populations and then worry about getting my family sick at home or whatever, you know, there's like a, so I, I kind of want to defer to the people who've had it harder than I have, I guess. Yeah. So have you enjoyed a lot more quality time with your family then? Uh, oh no, sorry. I, I was implying people who do, I, I live alone. So, oh, you so, live alone. Okay. But I mean, theoretically, you know, if one, you know, was working at a job with people and had family, you know, that's like a, where a lot of people gotten sick, you know, because of that kind of a scenario. I, uh, no, I have been very isolated, uh, during this personally. And I handled it, you know, for me emotionally because of my sort of introverted nature, it, it hasn't been that bad, but it is starting to it it's starting to wear like i think it's starting to um so but no i i have not really i've hardly seen anybody including family members or you know so yeah i've been yeah. sort of a hardliner yeah i'll tell you what pandemic fatigue is a real thing i wasn't no. sure what it was but you know because it's <laughs> no. happened in other countries yeah. in the world but this pandemic fatigue yeah. is an absolutely real thing yeah yeah and i'm 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 definitely kind of in that zone of pandemic fatigue now but yeah in 2019 that's not a phrase that would have made any sense yeah yeah definitely and it's and it just feels like uh 2019 was like 20 years ago but also yeah, it feels but, like it was very recent at the same time yeah it's like not that much has happened in a lot of our lives in a weird way you know um but it also feels like in a different era I, I personally hope that it remains a different era in the sense that there, for me, there are a lot of things personally, globally, environmentally, but also in terms of mental health that I hope that we hold on to a lot of stuff. And for me, you know, the fact of how kind of socially acceptable it is to reach out to people now, I feel like the pandemic has made it sort of more feel more like, you know, Zoom calls or, or whatever. I've even started in the last couple of months making a lot of phone calls, just calling people, including people I haven't talked to in, you know, years. Just like, like, is she calling people from my, from my whole life, you know, like, um, and somehow the pandemic has made that feel more like, I don't know, oh, of course, like people are trying to find ways to kind of emotionally survive this. And so stuff like that, I hope stays. Stuff like, the, the, the quiet pleasures you know staying home with people that you care about or alone whatever mm-hmm. uh as the case may be reading you know pri- private time all, rumination time time to contemplate 
you know, or meditate if you have a meditation practice, which I do. Um, all that kind of stuff that I feel the pandemic has made more, just kind of brought it a little more into people's lives. I hope that stays because I think I feel like as a civilization, we were all going too fast. There was too much chaos, too much FOMO. You know, everybody's sort of trying to like live their lives by some ideas of what other people are doing. And I mean, I'm speaking super broadly here, but, oh, but sure. I feel as a civilization, it was like the pause was way overdue. And I hope some of the lessons of the pause stay when the, you know, when the pandemic itself has been dealt with, presuming it will be, you know, um, that we don't just immediately all go back to the kind of chaotic stuff that we used to do. You know, um, I mean, I also hope that commuting goes way down and people don't just companies don't decide, okay, everybody's just, just to show up. Like, why don't we keep some of the benefits of the tech? We certainly get mentally screwed by a lot of the tech stuff. You know, the social media is so corrosive in a lot sure of ways is. to, you know, um, so let's keep the stuff that works. I mean, I think why not have meetings on zoom instead of like everybody driving their gas guzzling cars and then going into an office and then having their meeting once it, you know, or if they work in a company or whatever, like so much of it can be done. And I think, I hope we preserve that. I hope we preserve the, you know, the honoring of quiet time um, mm -hmm. in our lives, which it's almost like, cause you know, until the last, hundred and i mean really you know the industrial revolution and then the tech revolution all these like before these huge ships like we did not do the amount of like constant thinking about other people and doing a thousand things like we just mm -hmm. as as beings we weren't designed for that level of of multitasking and and worrying about other people's lives it just it's really really unhealthy mentally um and i think environmentally that so yeah and studies have shown i did some studies on multitasking on whether or not humans can actually multitask it's a very small percentage of the population that can actually effectively multitask and that shows yeah. me that we're not meant to do that as you said yeah yeah so so it's my it's my great hope that we you know as this pandemic relaxes that it it remains you know socially acceptable and personally that we all kind of make that choice ourselves to to take the lessons of of the good stuff of the you know the good shifts the i think a little more like kind of earnestness in terms of our connections with the people in our lives and i feel that that's been a positive shift the lowering the level of you know unnecessary driving you know the and and the lowering of like i don't know putting ourselves into trying to do too many things and um i i as people and as a planet we need a slower more conscious way of life you know yeah and the beautiful thing about the pandemic i know it sounds like a weird phrase but i remember like the first couple of weeks that the shutdown and lockdown happened uh we actually you know like the canals in rome italy you could actually mm -hmm. see wildlife there again. And uh, they said uh, the bear population at Yellowstone National Park quadrupled during that right. time. And and maybe it's just kind of the Earth's way to tell us, like, hey, quit messing with my planet, you know? Seriously. I mean, I, I, the, the, I remember saying, I remember hearing about those dolphins. I guess I think that was in Venice. Um, but they, um, which is just crazy to imagine. Um I mean, it's almost like hard to even such a beautiful and bizarre image that Italian dolphin scenario, which um, I haven't seen footage of it, but I heard about that also. But anyway, the, the, um, I, I feel like the planet has more in store for us. That's a lot more hardcore than what we've been dealing with um, in terms of, you know, climate emergency. Uh, so it's kind of like, wake the f up people you know um yeah. this is this this ain't nothing like what compared to what could happen you know i mean 
in terms of disease itself, like, you know, compared to some of the diseases people in prior centuries dealt with, Mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, the bubonic plague wiped out a third of Europe and, you know, few years, you know, literally like one in three people. And, you know, so, um, but also in terms of just, you know, what happens if the sea level, whatever, we, we know this, but like the, the catastrophe kind of cascade of catastrophes that will occur if we don't change what we're doing is will make this seem like literally like some kids, you know, play game, like this pandemic ain't nothing compared to what, you know? So I think there's like major shifts that have have to happen like immediately. Um, I'm obviously not alone and feeling that way. Yeah. Do you, do you feel like, um, like in your music, like when you play shows or whatever, do you feel like you're uh, like an activist in terms of like your causes, in terms of mindfulness, in terms of the environment, in terms of mental health as well? Um, I, I, I wouldn't say that I'm, I, you know, I, I, I border on it at times. I, yeah, I mean, I border, I, I know people who are real activists. So compared to them, I don't consider myself really an activist because I know people who are activists, activists, you know what I mean? I, but I've done, you know, I put out some songs that were done for explicit political and environmental reasons um, and played shows at, you know, climate strikes and stuff. So I guess that's a, that is activism, I guess. It's a form of activism anyway. So, um, but I don't, you know, for me as an artist, it's not my, uh, you know, it's not my kind of primary identity or my primary motivation. Um, it's, a, it's definitely like a strong secondary motivation, I would say, but like a, in a way, the sort of, I, I would say in a way, the mental health aspect of what I'm doing is, is in a way more central even than the environmental stuff for me because because a lot of the songs that I write I write from a place of almost wanting to soothe my own mental scatter and so the songs I mean a lot you know this is comments I've gotten from people you know people like telling me my songs like soothe them when they they're feeling upset and and you know I'm like I get it because I'm writing them from this often from the same place, wanting to cre- create that for people, both in the words and the music, wanting to create a sense of resolution or peace or breakthrough or whatever, you know, that obviously every piece of music has its own flavor and purpose and, insp- you know, comes from a different place. But, but in general, I, w- I, I would say that for me, like the kind of mental health stuff is a, is a big part of, what I do with my song, excuse me, with my songwriting. Um, so, but I haven't ever considered myself like a mental health activist in it, but, but, uh, I would say more than the average, like, you know, art rock, uh, artist or whatever you want to call what I do. Um, um, that it's actually a pretty central part of, of my storytelling. I mean, I have songs about, you know, extreme insomnia and, and suicidal thoughts. And these, these things come up in my lyrics and, you know, self-worth stuff and, st- you know, some there's stuff on the upcoming record that's really focused on women's mental health, you know, stuff about self-image for women. And, and there's a few songs that two or three songs that really like the subject is around that. So I had never thought of it that way, but I suppose, I could almost say I'm an activist on those, those topics. Um, but I, I do it through the medium of, of song more than I do through, you know, direct activism. Although I do do some of that. Oh, definitely. And, uh, like in terms of like, uh, self-image for women, uh, like how can like the role of media do a better job in order to portray women in a better light, so to speak, or like whether it's their self-image or anything like that. I mean, I think there's, you know, the last few years has obviously been a huge shift. People really trying to be conscious of all this stuff about, you know, from race to weight to age. Um, and, and by the way, I think it's, it's also a thing for men. I, you know, I definitely don't like, I, I suffer from it too. I mean, it's part of my thing about doing stuff in public. Like I have insecurities about, you know, how I look and all it's something that we all 
maybe not everybody, but many of us deal with, you know, um, I think it's been particularly, you know, acute for the, the females among us, um, just for a long time, generationally, or even like over the whole epoch, um, because of notions of femininity that go back to, you know, who knows how you want to count, but goes back to the Bible or the beginning of agriculture or the 1950s or the Victorian era. era and there's, you know, but anyway, it's been a long time. Uh, and so, um, so, I mean, yeah, I think the media, the, the, there's been good shifts in a positive direction in the last few years. And so I think bring, I, you know, I think for me as a, as a male artist, I think, as I think about it, it's not something I thought about before you're asking good questions, by the way, but um, I, um, you know, even talking about my own struggles, whether it's in interviews like this or, you know, through my songwriting uh, where it does show up anybody who would, I mean, I have a song called on the upcoming record called it's never enough that it's, it's very sort of obvious title in a way, but it's, it's really a song about that kind of universal, like self-worth problems. And like, you know, from school to being an adult to in the family, wherever, like feeling like you're not, whatever you're doing isn't, isn't enough for the, you know, those sorts of like being open about things that might be called like a mental health struggle, self-worth, struggles um so you know i think honoring artists if the media can honor artists and bring forward artists who are like talking about real stuff you know i i personally feel like there's a lot of not very uh real not very earnest kind of stuff out there in the culture and i and i i would like to see more things that are like more connected and you know, types of art, you know, whether it's songwriters or, or, or movies that are, you know, not so hyped uh, or self hypey in their vibe. Um, so I, for me, that would make a, I think a, a nice difference in terms of mental health to the degree that, you know, art is, I think both reflects the culture and ideally, you know, leads the culture in some way, you know, like it's, it's a bit of a, you know, art serves the role that religion or shamans serve, you know, in some way in the culture, what, you know, whether people dress up that way or not, but there's a sense of like, okay, we're, you know, those of us who create stuff are, you know, sometimes testing our own boundaries and then finding a way to express that, you know, uh, and ideally, you know, exposing wounds that were being ignored and festering, you know, we kind of like, Hey, look at that festering wound on your arm as a civilization or as a culture, like, you know what, you need to treat that. And I, I see that I see it and it's okay. You know? Um, so, so that's a, a kind of a subtle answer to your question, but, but <laughs> I, I think it can make a difference, you know, um, honoring art, art that really tries to tell truths and not necessarily in a way that's not fun, you know, like it wanted to be still like good uh, as a, you know, good from a crafts craft perspective and still pleasurable as, as a piece, whether it's a painting or a movie or a song or whatever, but ideally like it's about something, you know? Oh, definitely. And uh, I just feel like there is just going to be kind of this paradigm shift in, in, in music and the arts, as you said. So like, do you feel like there's going to be like a paradigm shift in concerts as well, where like, do you think as many people will go to shows now because of they're impacted by COVID or, or do you think uh, concerts would be more of an outreach or what do you think? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, as far as stuff to do with the pandemic, I've been wrong so many times over the last year. Like I thought this was <laughs> going to be like, I thought it was going to be like six weeks. Then I thought it was going to be, maybe it'll be like four, you know what I mean? Like, so I would be, I would be, it would just be flipping a coin to answer that. I have no idea. I don't know what's going to happen. And I find to, personally, I find the music business itself. So even before the pandemic, such a weird, I mean, I think there's it's another conversation, but I think the music industry is, it was like born in a strange way and it's grown in a strange way. And it's always been like a weird beast, you know? Uh, so Expected, I unexpected. 
Yeah, yeah, I couldn't predict. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, I want to be touring personally, but, um, you know, and I expect I... It, so we'll see. Like, <laughs> there's that. We'll see. Definitely. So um, if you decide to tour again, what can fans expect at an Ethan Gold concert? Um, well, I mean, I... I I suppose it depends, you know, what the pandemic, uh, yeah. Okay. So leaving that aside, mm-hmm. um, you, what can fans expect at an Ethan Gold concert? I will, I, one thing, you know, one interesting thing that's happened in the pandemic is I've started playing, I, I did a bunch of live streaming last year, which is something I never imagined doing. And it was just literally with my phone. Like I didn't even have like a proper mic or just literally with my phone, just up in my you know, in my living room, just wandering around to the guitar or the piano, like super casual. But um, one of the things that was cool for me was I was like, you know what? Because I've done soundtrack work as well. If I, I've actually kind of brought that stuff into my live set. So I'm hoping uh, I plan to actually make shows that have a real emotional arc to them and may have, you know, a few instrumental pieces in there and try to create something that's really is like a journey. Um, a lot of my records are designed like journeys. I, I don't, I, I have a record songs from a toxic apartment. It was really designed to, to be listened to from end to end. And, um, which is not the way of these days, which is so focused on singles. I know it's totally right. anachronistic, but I still, you know, honor the art form in that way. It, that's just what appeals to me. But, uh, so for the shows, you know, I, I think taking people on a, on a, emotional journey is is my goal that that ideally brings brings them in touch with themselves through like you know bringing emotions up that may have been dormant and bringing them into the air and walking out with joy i mean that's those are the, that's a how's that for a broad and ambitious answer but that's you know that is what i'm going for um and um so i look forward to being able to do that and um you know, whether it's solo, which I, you know, I want to be playing with a band, but who knows, you know, the, the economics of that is always a thing, but, um, you know, solo will probably more be, have more of a sort of like intimate, like warts and all sort of experience and with other players, then it would be, I think, more kind of a cinematic experience in terms of just letting, you know, the, ex- the, the experience, the sound wash over, and uh hopefully being transformative for people i mean otherwise otherwise what am i doing (laughs) so uh i try to put transformation in my songs and also in a in a set or an album that i you know larger piece that i'm presenting that's awesome man and um so june 11th earth city one the lawning is coming out and uh what else um, would you like to add in regards to Ethan Gold, whether it's uh, where people can find you or whether it's uh, in terms of a mental health message? Uh, are you going to, should I tell you my socials and stuff like that? Is that sure? If you uh, want to, <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I guess that's what you're asking where you can find me. I'm like, uh, well, uh, here's my mailbox number. No, uh, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, my name is Ethan Gold. Uh, you, maybe you can see that on whatever screen you're, taking this in on and uh i i ethangold.com my socials most of them are at ethan gold and you know i'm the music is streaming on the places well i guess you may be listening to this on spotify so you could go right over right now and listen to me on spotify uh anyway that all the obvious places uh and um yeah my record earth city one the longing is is part one of this trilogy and it's really about this for me, the word, the, the notion of longing, um, there's this sort of inner emptiness or alienation that a lot of people have felt for a long time. Um, and often longing doesn't know exactly what it's longing for. And so this record is really about different, you know, many of it myself. There's also a few songs that are really character based, but the sense of like looking for connection in the big, city either literally a city or the sort of metaphorical city of of our civilization on the whole planet so um i'm going on a journey i'm I, I invite you on a journey through these this trilogy which will roll out over the next year and a half um of earth city where i'm i'm 
hoping to answer some of the questions that this first record asks. Awesome. Ethan Gold, it was so nice to have you on for uh, the Madness to Creation podcast. And uh, thank you so much for your time. And thank you so much for being gracious and just have an awesome conversation. Likewise. Thank you. Awesome. And let's follow up sometime. I would like to hear from me again. So. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you for making this, this podcast. It's really important. Well, I certainly do appreciate that. That means a lot. So you take it easy. You too. Okay. Bye-bye.